you so much, everyone. Hello. What a beautiful crowd. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so goddamn excited to have this conversation. <laughs> of course, you know everybody who's on the panel here, Pamela Adlon, Elena Glazer, <laughs> Michelle Buteau. And thank you for joining us. This is a live taping of my podcast, Choice Words. And we're going to talk about a lot of choices here today. And we're going to talk about the movie that you all made together called Babes, which I saw and I fucking loved it. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, my God. We got a lot to get to. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having yeah. me. In this cavernous space. In this dry. In this dry convention arena. <laughs> we have a competing <laughs> podcast occurring right next door with featuring Conan O'Brien. God damn him to hell. And don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare. How many try people to are in there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the doors are barred. You're fucking here with us, <laughs> and it's going to be way better. Okay. So this is a little bit unusual. I don't usually do live episodes, but we do have these three incredible guests, and we have so much to talk to, talk to them about. I generally start, like when I start the podcast, I always like to launch into it kind of that z the entry point is that we talk about choices that we've made in our lives, like Super big choices, little choices, things that impacted life in an expected or unexpected way. So you've all worked together on this beautiful film, Babes. Uh, of course, you've done incredible work individually as well. Pamela, I'm going to start with you because you directed this movie uh, that brings us all here today. And really, directing is all about, it is exclusively about making big decisions, <laughs> huge decisions, little decisions. All the decisions are yours to make. And it is an insane process. Do you like that? Do you love that feeling of being in charge? Do you relish it? Okay, so. <laughs> um, as you know, and we are all moms here on the stage. And um, it, it was really funny for me because I had three kids um, when they were little when I started being a director professionally. Yeah. And... Uh, nobody would listen to me <laughs> in my house. <laughs> so I was like, oh, these people <laughs> really want my opinion and they want to listen to me. And one of the things that I learned from one of the first ADs I worked with, Maria Mantia, on uh, season one of my show, Better Things, she said, yes. thank yes, you. God um, she, she said, it's your ability to make decisions that's making everybody feel safe. Oh, I and love that. It was, it was um, you know, it's something, it's like you might not always make the right decision, but you've got to make a choice. You've right. You've got to make a decision and go in a certain direction. Otherwise, you know, it's all going to go off the rails. And, and one of the people that... I learned from who is like my mentor and hero is Tracy Ullman. Yes. And I did her show um, when I was like a new mom, when when my oldest was like a, ta a baby. And I watched her, you know, star, direct, write her own show and troubleshoot right. how to get through the day the quickest, most efficiently, and not compromise the quality. Right. And I just watched her and took a page from that, and it's just really served me That's in my career. great insight. I, th I agree. I feel like that is the key. It's like, even though you might be making you might not make a choice that's perfect in the moment, yeah. people do feel safer if yeah. you're just sort of decisive. They're like, okay, yeah. someone's in charge. That was them locking us in. Did they you hear did. the door? And I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Let me ask, Alana, Michelle, do you, are you, lo are you love decision making? Do you love it? Are you like, I love to be in charge. I love to direct the ship. People feel safe in my presence because I'm so aware of my decision making at all times. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I actually do love to make decisions. I don't think it's all instinct. And then I, when I mess up, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> but that's just, you know, how I live. What I love to do, too, is find someone that I know knows something more than I do. Yes. 
So I right. like to find people that I can trust to say, you make that decision. My yeah. decision that I'm making now is that you make that decision. Right. <laughs> and I think that's really helpful because, uh, you know, uh, so many of my friends, especially powerful women, think they have to do it right. by themselves right. all the time. You don't. So you're good at delegating. when you know, it's, it's hard to do. It's yeah. hard to do. It is. It is hard to do because if somebody messes up, then you right. gotta have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think everybody wants to at least try to be their best. Right. So it's also sort of giving someone an opportunity to see something in, in themselves that they didn't see before. Right, right. Yeah. How about you, Alana? How do you how do you, how does this question sit in your bones? I like it. You like it. <laughs> I like making decisions. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I, um, I think, you know, it's like I, I trust my sense of care. Mm -hmm. And I like really what you're saying is resonating with me so hard where it's like, you know, I think also um, moving through the world as a woman, you think you have to do more than your job. Right. Because we usually do and we usually have to um, do it better and more times to be seen uh, mm -hmm. for the first time, you know. And... Um, I'm really enjoying, as I get older, knowing my limits. Right. And, uh, and that's right, you know, knowing when to hand something off. I, I love an expert. I'm, I'm thrilled to yes. not be one. In fact, yes. I think, like, as, as a leader, <laughs> I'm like, I'm communicating what I'm assuming none of us know. We're all, you know, you know like, I, I, I feel, like, uh, proud to not know, actually, and to... <laughs> Every person on this panel has had their own shows. That's incredible. That's actually, I love yeah. that. Oh, yeah, that's nice. This is a very bossy bunch, and I am 100% here for it. Do you? <laughs> oh, we have so much to discuss. All right, your movie. Okay, so let's talk about the movie. Let's kind of pivot to that. So the three of you have collaborated as a told you about this movie called Babes, which is about getting pregnant. It's about childbirth. I can't think of a better time to talk about this than the beginning of Women's History Month. Yesterday, International Women's Day. Everything's going great for us. Uh, 10 out of 10, no notes. Next question. <laughs> wow. The movie... And it's crazy because when we were in prep, Roe was repealed. Oh my God, really? And I was like, oh fuck. This is like, yeah. you know, because you, you want to be careful with every story because everybody reads into the slightest thing now. Yes. And so it was just like, wow, we're really making this movie about yeah. making yes. a choice. Right. About right making now. a choice. Yes, in this moment. And it really, it also really deeply highlights the parts of pregnancy, the parts of birth, the parts of having babies that no one tells you about before you do any of these things. Like I know that you, none of, none of you were expecting that the whole conversation was gonna go down the route of placentas, but it is. Um, we don't just sweep that under the... No, we it's highlight. not. We highlight it and we need it because we are all we're all mothers at different stages, at different phases of motherhood. Michelle, you have twins. Yeah. You have five-year-old twins. Ilana, you have little, you have little, little tiny. Yeah, she's, she's not yet three. She's not yet three. You have kids in their twins. They're older than three me. Three girls in their, their <laughs> I love that you're reversing. I'm aging. at the That's place cute. where I lie about my kids' age. <laughs> just leave it at that. Yeah. I tell everybody I'm 66, so they tell me I look great. So yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, they're like, holy shit, you look amazing. Totally. I'm like, I do. Thank you. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's our responsibility to demystify the whole process. Like, we're all, <laughs> there's no, I love, we love our, I have three kids also, all varying ages, like 18, 15, 13. Yep. Um, Jesus. Wow. I know. There's a wow. lot of. It's so scary to yeah. hear. Yeah. What? There's 13? <laughs> That's a lot. There's Those a lot of mother's milk. There's a lot of mother's milk flowing uh -huh. on this stage. 
Secrets about our bodies, secrets about <laughs> motherhood mm. do not help us. Does it not feel like we are kept in the dark on purpose about what right. happens to our bodies? Like some d- dude, like high up, decided that we all knew that our hair was all going to fall out after or that you would never go swimming again and not pee in the pool. Do they think that we would never have kids? It, you know, um, it's really interesting because <laughs> you, you go from, you know, snorting rails off each other's tits <laughs> in, your, yeah. in your teens yeah. to, yeah. like, snorting Boniva and <laughs> saying, yes. like, it, it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing because nobody ever told us about menopause because oh. you know, my mother's generation, you just don't speak of such things. No. And, you know, when I got my period, my mother was like, Uh, You can use these, and she takes out, like, a mini cot or mattress. (laughs) And I got confused because I saw um, a Tampax commercial, and the lady's like, you can play tennis and go swimming and go to the beach. And I did it with one of those things, and I was like, how are those women really doing that? And then finally, I got my period when I was 12. At 16, my friend Sherry Olevsky goes, we're going swimming. You're not, come here. And she introduced me to a tampon. Oh. So it's, it's literally Different. about women mm-hmm. showing you and guiding you because yes. you don't yeah. get that. That's right. Yes. Because it's for us to know our bodies and know what we need, want, and what will happen gives us power. And yes. by, it's not even like, I don't think it's a campaign for us not to have babies. It's a campaign to keep us like cows having babies. Yes. You know? Yeah. And separated from each other right. in a state of not knowing. Because if you right. can keep us all confused, yep. yeah. we'll just do what you say. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And for me, this was a very interesting, special, a dollop of traumatic experience because mm-hmm. my body was never able to carry my children, so I had right. a surrogate. And so here I am... Reading the script, yeah, the top, <laughs> I'm giving birth. Yes, <laughs> my water's broken in public, like, and I'm like, what? And I'm trying to breastfeed a baby, and so I'm looking to these women who have been through this, like, is this how it goes? I don't know because I always dreamed of it, but it didn't happen. But now I'm like in the throes of motherhood, which is its own special mind fuckery. <laughs> and so, what was so? What's so beautiful about working with these two is that I can say, is this how it goes? And they have like three stories in their back pocket right. to make it look good, funny, relatable, and real. And I just have, as a mom, a new, just a, a crazy appreciation for what women's bodies can do. Right. You know? And, um, and it's so it's so insane and special. I'm like, no wonder the government wants to control it. <laughs> right, that's right. right. We will break these. We will break your dicks off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yes. what do you mean? Yes. With no hands. With no hands. <laughs> 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 ah. I ah. loved like the friendship that you demonstrate. I mean, it's that it is you know friendship that is family is such a. Well, I mean, it's the the theme of the whole movie. I mean, it's just the undercurrent that runs through the entire film. It's a romance. I mean, it is. It's beautiful. Yeah, friendship is, um, you know, I recently, uh, you know, and uh, my core group of girlfriends actually came here to support me and see the movie tonight. They're here. And And we have maintained this group and it's not just like, hi, hello, casual. Like, I remember I was feeling something that was, um, I knew was a scary thing that was coming up. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to just write to everybody and say, this thing is happening and have everybody go, oh my God, you got this. We love you, babe. <laughs> I hate that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was more like received copy we are taking this in, and the next time we see each other, we're gonna talk. So it's like what you were saying, Mishy, that it's like you want somebody else 
to make a decision for you sometimes. Mm -hmm. You got a war room with each other. Right. And women doing that together is yes. the most powerful place you can be. It really is. Like, I definitely did not have any of my friends check me for dilation <laughs> when I was about to give birth. <laughs> <laughs> But with an iPhone, you, with an Ashley. iPhone, but that you were able <laughs> that, that is in this movie twice was so beautiful to me. OK, Ilana, you co-wrote this. You co-wrote this script. What was the genesis for writing? What was the genesis for writing the script? So I wrote this this movie with Josh Rabinowitz, yeah. who's also a producer on the movie. And one of our other producers, Susie Fox, we just kind of set out. Susie kind of had like a vision in the shower of this movie, just a flash mm -hmm. of this movie. And she uh, brought it to us, like, it's me, and I'm, I get knocked up, and I have a best friend, and she has kids already. And we, we brainstormed and threw our, all our ideas out there, mm -hmm. and the, what we started organizing it through, I mean, there's so much funny shit where you're saying at, at birth, you not only deliver a baby, you deliver placenta. Yeah. What? What the fuck? Yeah. The horniness of pregnancy that's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> the diaper. I mean, listen, we can talk <laughs> all, we can talk all about the, the diaper that they give you in the hospital after you've given birth and that you have to make yourself. Sits bath. They just give you Sits the, Sits bath. Yeah. I gave birth the first time and it was like, yeah. It was like, have you guys ever seen Little Big Man with Dustin Hoffman? That's what it was like. It was like the blood, <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> if I got attacked, in an alley with knives, I would have looked the same way. Yeah. They would have kept me in the hospital for a good week or two. Yeah. Yeah, longer 24 than 24 hours. Right. Oh, You're yeah. fine. Right, right. One of the scenes that got <laughs> cut, though, was when there was a placenta that came out. And oh, we had a liver. Didn't Diego yeah. like buy a yeah, liver like from went to go get a liver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to say I, I that can't believe it got cut. I, um, a show that I did with my husband called The Detour, which you can no longer, it no, because of the rules of television now, it no longer exists anywhere Ugh. on this earth. You it's cannot so watch good. it. It's so good. It's so good. We delivered a placenta on that TV show. They, let, they fucking let us do it in a kiddie pool in a living room. The wow. full placenta came out, and we were Damn. like, I don't know that we'll ever see that again, but Damn. I want to see your cut scenes. I want to see it. I was just talking about that, too. I want to put the cut scenes out and be like, because oh, they're yeah. so funny. And to be yes. like, this isn't even the movie. We Come have... see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the cut scenes in, in, in Babes, a lot of the cuts were just these two. These two, like, masters right. doing what they do and bouncing off each other. And just the runs. Like, we just had... This beautiful, just like there was a an embarrassment of riches with the stuff that they were doing. Um, it was it's incredible to to watch them do what they do innately, and we had to like pare it down, pare it down, pare it down. Yeah, kill your darlings. So yeah. maybe Glenn Basner he would give us those. Oh yeah, put out a little extras or something. Michelle, you've been so like refreshingly open, I feel, about having your twins through IVF and then ultimately with a surrogate. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, IVF has been in the new, I mean, yeah. what is, you must have some pretty uh, choice words for the people in Alabama who wanted to outlaw IVF. I yeah. mean, isn't that the saddest thing you've ever, I couldn't believe it. Is that what's happening now? Yeah, it's criminal. It's criminal. It's, it's criminal. Um, the biggest, the biggest thing is, at every turn, you feel like you've done something wrong. Right. And you know, I uh, surrogacy was illegal in New York, gestational sur surrogacy. So I stopped with Andy Cohen and a bunch of other beautiful people who have um, built their families su through surrogacy. And I keep coming uh, across this theme. Queer families saying, wow, I didn't even know that I would be able to get married and be able to have children, like, ha you know, like, again, born a crime, right? And, right. and you know, um, cancer patients who have survived, who were able to collect eggs before, the, you know, they did chemo so they could, and everybody feels like they've done something wrong. 
And that's just criminal. Right. And so um, anyone going through, because um, it's such a, it's, it's such a, it's such a mind fuck. Like, right. do I even want to be a parent? Can I? And then if you can't do it naturally and then you have options because that's what technology is for, hello. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden people come and say that there's something wrong with you and you shouldn't be doing that. That's what I really love about this movie too because you guys, the way you and Josh wrote it, it's like you're saying the thing without saying it, you know? Yeah. It's like, should I be a single mom? Should I um, take control of my body while I still can? Right. right. You know, like, it's, to me, the only word that comes to mind is criminal. Like, how dare you? Right, right. I mean, the film does, it revolves around this central choice to keep right. a surprise pregnancy. I think that a lot of people on the right forget that, you know, a part of being pro-choice, like having a baby can be a choice that you make. The option goes both ways. Um, you know, when I started... The podcast Choice Words, the name of the podcast felt like a nod to being, you know, pro choice. But no, we never really talk, we don't talk about that often. Would any of you have made different choices about like pregnancy or motherhood if you'd had more information? Or would it just have been a better experience overall because you were more informed? I mean, I was, I was like 34 when I uh, had my kid and I guess 33 and I decided to get pregnant and thought about it for years. Like, right. and I, I find that the knowledge and the, the choicefulness is what's made it so joyful. Right. So, I mean, I, I mean, I can't even get it. I can barely get into it. It is so psychotic and sadistic <laughs> to, it's just, it's just nuts. Yeah. And there's not even really like a narrative on the right anymore. I'm like, what are you guys even what are you doing? fighting for? Yeah. They're like, yeah. doo, 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 doo. you know, it's just absolute <laughs> bonkers. It, um, eggs, you know, like it, it's, you want people's eggs? I mean, it's just so whacked out and it's been normalized because every day they're like, well, this horror and now this terror and it's all, none of it makes sense. Yeah. So we're pretending like there's a like side. Like it's not hard enough to yes. be in a relationship, endure a relationship if you get, pre I never imagined, like, I never thought one, oh, I want to get, I want to get married and have kids. Like, I never, <laughs> that, like, this, it's impossible to me that I have kids. It was never something, you know, I had the happy accident, the on-purpose sibling, the band-aid, didn't work. I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. But it's like, you know, every like <laughs> fucking schmuck who wants to nut into anybody and they've got kids walking around mm -hmm. and the women are told that he has rights right. yeah. over their kids. Like, it just doesn't... It's just kind of chaos, too. Like, it, none of it is even lining up anymore with the yes. story. Yeah. Like, oh. and I, just what I love about Babes that I don't think we even intended, we were just telling this one story of these two best friends, but is the celebration of different kinds of families. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you feel that, too. I mean, it, and also just, like, <laughs> I love that you plan your the birth around <laughs> on the theme of having a prom. Like, you are like, let's celebrate this like the prom I never had or the prom that went horribly awry. Celebration right. of life. Yeah. That's Celebration right. of love. It's meaningful. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Is there anything, like, what do you wish that you had known about a parenthood before you embarked upon it? I, I'll tell you what I wish. Oh I wish God. someone would have told me it was that I was going to have a lot of fun. Uh, yes. You know what I mean? Like... I mean, I totally agree with that. We do talk an awful <laughs> lot about all the how tiring it and and that is valid. And you definitely have to talk about that. But I wish someone had just said, like, you don't be so fearful. You're gonna have, you're gonna fucking love these people. I've been touring uh, my latest hour of stand up, and that's the entire framework. I open by saying, I am shocked by the joy. I'm shocked, and that's another thing. So they won't tell us that. 
you know, we're horning our hair falls out, <laughs> but they, they will tell us that it sucks and you, right. you suck now and you're going to suck harder later. It's, it's a crazy, the whole right. thing is upside down and backwards. It's so fucking fun. I feel, I feel so powerful and hot. Why is that a dangerous I mean, cause thing? Because you are, bitch. I, I love it. I, yeah. It's why, what, I don't get the purpose of the story. But the is. other part of it is, you know, so like, you're so exhausted. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're so howlish, mal, like out of your mind. But like, I remember like standing in a Target with my friend Susie like a few months ago. And I'm seeing these parents and it's like deja vu. And they've got their kids. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you see them going through the cycle. I'm like, oh, they're just start. Oh, it's back to school the fucking shopping list, like all of this stuff. And I'm like, I wish I could have just separated myself and like time traveled into the future. Yeah. And me now saying, enjoy it. Enjoy yeah. it. I know you're tired, but it's so good right now. And don't let them get phones. <laughs> no phones. I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. <laughs> when I say that par like being a parent has made me a better person, it's not because I'm taking care of them. Like she's still an asshole, but what I'm s <laughs> But what it has done is made me look at everybody else in a different way. Mm. Oh. Like, oh shit, that is someone's child. Mm -hmm. And now when I do stand-up comedy and I do crowd work, it's almost like I can see someone's inner child. You know? Like totally. once I see like this circle happening, I'm like, that's who the fuck you are. Yep. Right. My bad. I just don't look at someone like a problem or an enemy or like this. And I'm like, oh, okay. What was your family life like? Totally. Uh, you, totally. You know what I mean? Because that will right. inform you and, and about them. And then it won't be personal anymore. So it actually is like, I don't know. It's made me a better person. I'm way more understanding about other people. Mm, I like yeah. that. Mm, that's true. That's like a, the that's like almost like a, theater school exercise that I did once was, was like looking into someone's eyes. We oh, used to shit. have to look into someone's eyes and see them as a three-year-old. And then, you know, you're in theater school, so everybody's crying. We're all like... <laughs> 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 but <it's> look! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my God. But it's a great. I love that you're describing that. It is an interesting way to, like, just feel automatic compassion for like a dude in wraparound shades who's driving a pickup truck and being an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I don't want to look into his eyes. Um, Wraparounds, that's always the giveaway. <laughs> they're in Conan's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're not in here. There's a lot. Right now, yeah. Um, we're all... Okay, so we're all working. We all travel as part of our career. That part is really hard. It is hard. Do you feel like you have... I don't feel like I was able to personally maintain my own personality at all. Like, I'm just, we were talking about it backstage. We're like, definitely, our kids are definitely texting us during the oh, show. Oh, yeah, like, I have 5,000 texts from people like, South by, fuck yeah. Right. Sending uh, you love, like, on my phone. Uh, yeah. And my daughter's like, when are you coming home? Can I have 17 people over? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm landing at four, and yeah. I need you nobody there. It's so funny how you want kids and then you want them gone. <laughs> you want them a lot, just not in your house. Yeah, mine are going to text me 80 times and they're going to be like, can you put $17 on my green light? I need it now. Sell me. <laughs> Wine. Yeah. Um, but Sam, what do you mean uh, your personality, that they're just filling your head so you're like, where well, am I? Well, it's like we're now coming to the stage of, you know, the kids are older and we're like, who are we? What are mm. we like? We don't remember that part. So that part is, you know, you have to th think about Oof. that. How do you, how are you making decisions are you that ensures or does the best possible job of of hopefully ensuring that you're making good human beings like how do you make those choices how are you seeing th those choices unfold as you've got little kids so it's very real it doesn't feel like anything works yet <laughs> you right. know they're five i'm trying they talk to me at the same time i'm like what Everyone take a turn. I'm also the only child, so I'm like, stop arguing. Why would you argue with someone you love? 
Oh, right. Get the fuck out of here. Why does this big titty bitch have so many feelings? Why? <laughs> Where's my applesauce, bitch? That's what she said one day. Where's my applesauce, bitch? At four. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was pretty spot on. So I was like, coming right up. But say please. What the fuck? So like, like I don't know. For me, like I just wish... I can only like go like from like how I grew up and I wish my mom was just more confident, you know, but if her generation, I cannot believe that she still has hair on her butt, like on her head. You know what I mean? Like, so, so I wish my mom was more confident. I wish she spoke up for herself more. So now I'm doing that. Right. And I wish she just taught me more about history, about all of it. You know, whether it's being Caribbean, Caribbean American, being black, colonialism, being light skinned and understanding what like a pay gap is, you know, like um, what an orgasm gap is. Did you know that shit? There's an orgasm gap? <laughs> White men are still making the most orgasms out of everybody. Bullshit. What? Yes. <laughs> Teach a kid about that, especially when they're five. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's just all the history that they're not going to get in class. Like, my right. husband and I, we are the walking history lesson. So, I try. I don't know if anything sticks. Right, right. They can't even wipe their butts properly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my kids grew up and they didn't know how to make a phone call. Isn't that terrible? They, there was like some point where I was like, call your grandmother. And they were like, how? We don't, oh what do you mean? God. And I, they were like 10. Do you know what I mean? I was yeah. like, right, I never taught you. Yeah. I never showed you. We yeah. don't. I, tr I tried to be aware that, you know, like I, I learned this term from one of my daughters who, who had some great tutors uh, that, you know, I'm a kinesthetic learner like they are. What is that? What is uh, that I guess it was just me with this this one lady who taught me this term for her. She needs to touch and see and read oh. and not be talked at oh. and explained. So I, I would just like try to teach. It's that whole teach a man to fish thing. Right. And then they're just going to go. You could be as wonderful and nurturing and the as the perfect mom. Right but you're still going to fuck it all up. Right. Right. And you just sort of have to accept yeah. that you were doing the best you could in that exact moment. That's yes. right. I yeah. feel like as long as you're doing the best in every moment, even though sometimes that's not good, it's <laughs> I'm doing a bad job, but it is the best bad job that I can possibly do. Yes. yes. Right? It's the I best bad. They'll love you when you're dead. It's yeah. that whole thing. I right. mean, I hope so. I always say I have no idea what I'm doing. I just know that no one else could do it. Uh, Better than me. Right. Yes. Yeah. Same with marriage. I don't, this motherfucker, we still like each other after 15 years? <laughs> That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Who is he? <laughs> Why is he still here? <laughs> what? I'm going to write more jokes about your penis. And yet he's still here. How do you decide what to use from your personal life, uh, such as your spouse's penis? I How write it, and then I run it by him. Oh, you do? Uh, yeah, and if he doesn't like it, then I definitely use it. You're <laughs> <laughs> like, this is gold. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I do think that... Um, how do you, why do you think that we are gaslit? I do think that we are gaslit into, in this country into thinking that the way that we handle childbirth and pregnancy here in the U.S. is normal. Like, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I think we're, they try to make us believe that this is just the way it is in other places, and it's absolutely not this way in other places. We can see this. I'm from Canada. You live abroad. You can see. Whoa, that you're the... from Canada? I know. I apologize. <laughs> oh, but I didn't like, know this is an international panel, Sam. It's an international panel. <laughs> and the Very uh, okay, continental. Um, our approach to paid leave, our approach to the maternal mortality rate, our approach to the child care crisis here is not normal. In many ways, it is very unique. Uh, to the way that we live here. It's, none of this was a question. This was just a, a comment. This it's was just important a statement. <laughs> things to hear about. I, so for me, I really, 
did not know what I was going into. And I remember when I had my first uh, daughter, I remember being in the delivery room and the nurse was like, okay, so what do you, what, what you want to do? Give me your birth plan, whatever. And I was like, I don't fucking know what I'm, I, I was hoping you would guide me <laughs> right. through. And mm -hmm. she said, oh, that makes it so much easier because she was used to women coming into the delivery room with like a laminated birth plan. Okay. Like, like this is how I want this to go down. Right. And I, you know, I guess I put my trust in them. I went to Lamaze class, one class. I, I bought like a coupon book of like four. <laughs> I don't know. I did one because I was in that class and I remember this one mom was like, it was a Q and A session or whatever, and she goes, "What if um, they give me uh, an epidural and I get paralyzed?" And oh. then another mom said another thing, and it was like all of this negative shit going into my head. Right. And I'm like, Ugh. I'm good because I know this fucking thing's coming out of me one way or another. Right. And I didn't want to be in that. Like, I don't want your crazy. I got my own crazy, so I'm just gonna take care of it but i wish there was you know you know it's why i talk about menopause like right. in my show like i didn't know anything right all i knew is that i went to the obgyn and there was this long ugly green buck slip and it said the menopause years and it was just like the worst thing like it was like next <laughs> to the toilet in the corner right. and i was like embarrassingly like put it in my backpack yes and people you know just women don't get any information good or bad yes we are not taught about the spectrum of our lives and a large part of the spectrum of our life is spent in uh perimenopause and menopause and postmenopause and it has been like steeped in shame yeah i remember like hot flashes i thought was like a couple years it's like 20 years the process of hot flashes because yeah. 20 years long i just learned this and I think uh, women as an entity just learned this yep. as well. Yes. I thought it was like, whew, it's hot. No, it's 20 years of being like, is it hot in here? Am I crazy? Yeah. That's, that's what menopause is. Yeah. It's like the process of untethering yourself from shame is so, it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. And it is the most valuable thing you can do in your life. And to make, a, to make it possible for other people to untether themselves from that shame. And I actually, I feel that in the movie too, because it's such a like sprightly vision of a slice of the lives of a couple of people. Mm -hmm. And it's so... Completely judgment free. It's actually very refreshing to witness. I think that's how people naturally are. Yes. But then there's this like one guy who has one algorithm who's dictating <laughs> how we think we all talk to each other. I mean, it's so right. crazy. There's like a narrative we're all living in, and I it's based around sickness. I guess that's like the business model for America. Right. Sickness. Right. And I, I find, especially, like, we're so lucky in comedy, in the New York comedy scene. You just yeah. go, and the, the other comedians are different kinds of people, and you talk to them in a human way, and then you talk to strangers in a human way. It's this, like, practice that I'll just never get over, how yeah. magical it is. And I, I just feel like people are usually chill with each other and are, are down to be like, how was your day? And genuinely want to know. Mm -hmm. You know, women want to tell each other what's going on and right. share information. There's this, you know, bizarre, uh, this bizarre script that I, I don't find true to life. Mm -hmm. Did you, okay, look, can we talk about the process of making this movie a little bit? So how did you, did you know each other? I mean, how did the, your, this team, if I can, this kind of, this dream team, how did you come together? How did you coalesce? They didn't drug to test. This? You, yeah. <laughs> you were like, you checked this box, you're in. <laughs> so Josh and I wrote this movie, and he and Susie and I were looking for directors, and Jupiter had just come off her fifth season. I'm Jupiter better things. trying mm -hmm. to make Woo. it stick. Jupiter. <laughs> Jupiter Siegel, the artist formerly known as Pamela Adlon, had just finished <laughs> Better Things, right. and it was just a, a perfect match. Yeah. And then we were looking to cast the role of Dawn, and when we thought of Michelle, we couldn't get off of it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I begged you. 
a couple times. Yeah. And, and I, I was yeah. like, there, because Michelle and I have known each other for 20 years. Okay, yeah. I, I, I was just like, there's no way that we're going to get something as funny and as emotional with anybody else. Not just for the chemistry, right. but for Michelle's gifts. Right. I'm, I'm so glad I did it. I'm so glad you talked me into it. I wasn't going to at first. I was like, I'm writing the show, Survival of the Thickest. It's my first time writing a show. I should really just Woo! Right. like do everything, like be available for all the Zoom meetings and all of that. Da, 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 da. And what's so great about working with boss women? And Alana's like, you could do both. <laughs> you will be exhausted. It'll be fun. It'll be fucking fire. I'm like, what? And she's like, do both. You're gonna have a show and a movie. That's amazing. Let's go. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I have meetings. She's like, you don't gotta go to those meetings. <laughs> no you don't you gotta go to those meetings <laughs> you like do what you can do and come and do this movie and I was like I guess I'm gonna go do this movie <laughs> and um, yeah it was it, it, it was really fucking magical I will tell you that it was magical and it's also like working with other people's kids sometimes right. feels like a little while but that was like also great oh with yeah you know working with children is working bizarre. with children is interesting you're like so we're Co-workers? Yeah. Yeah. Is that what this is? We work together? Yeah. That's strange. And then, but like, the mom is right there, and you're just like, I'm going to try and breastfeed your baby, BRB. Yeah. It's so bizarre. <laughs> I remember <laughs> at one point I said to Caleb, <laughs> who plays Tommy, this five-year-old child, and uh, I just was like, um, so, Caleb, is it okay if Hassan, you know, just comes and touches your hair, like, you know, like this, whatever. And he went like this, looked at his mom like this. <laughs> and she goes, you're going to have to ask Caleb again. And I did, and I was like, Caleb, is it okay? And he goes, mm, -mm. And I was like, wait, why are you here again? <laughs> 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 this is the fun of kids and Babies in <laughs> movies and TV. Yes. And you have them for a, a much shorter day. Also, yeah. you have them for a very limited time. I, I mean, there are babies. Five minutes film. with a newborn. Five minutes with a newborn. Yeah. Oof. Thunderstorm hold for the thunderstorm. Yeah. Right. Got a newborn. Five minutes. Got a five-year-old. Yeah. Whose parents have agendas. Like, it's, <laughs> everything is very, very interesting. It's a really different experience. What is, what is the primary difference? Because, and I, we haven't talked enough about better things in this panel, which we could do a whole other panel on better things. It is just, I think, a perfect, it's a perfect experience. And it, when the show ended, I was very sad but it ended perfectly. What is, can you talk about the difference, what is the difference between filming a series like Better Things and filming a feature? What is different about the process? Or is it just so complimentary? Or, I don't know. Yeah, for me it was, um, it, it just went along like, it, you know, what I like to do is, uh, it's it's a very humanistic experience. I I see thing. Everything is visual, and um, uh, it's a feeling. Right. So I'm going for a feeling. Mm -hmm. I'm going for what's going on in her head. What's going on in her head? What's going on in Hassan's head? Right. That was uh, very interesting to me. So it's all relational. Right. And um and I like. Um, the in-between. Right. I like the in-between and I love transitions and I love um, letting things sit and letting us experience that. So it, in, in this film, what was really interesting and powerful to me is their relationship. Right. And how they came up together and how important that was and how you know, one person's going in a different direction because they have a very healthy, different kind of relationship. Right. And a partner. And then to have, you know, the person who was your partner when you were kids mm -hmm. saying, hey, man, we're still, we're still partners and how important that is. Yeah. 
and then showing this beautiful, healthy relationship between Hassan and Michelle. Yes. And that that can coexist with this relationship. Yes. And the the beauty of a friendship and then just a family which becomes its own thing and then embracing everybody and that's how you make a village. And that's what this movie is. And and I know that you said you were really touched at the end of this movie. Yes. We're not telling don't just yeah, calm don't. down. But go to the premiere. It's tonight. Yeah, the premiere's tonight at six thirty, babes, at the Paramount. Yeah. Yay. Yes. And also the music. I feel like when I watch your stuff, the music is such a key. It is uh it it is interwoven in your projects in a way that is so organic and so compelling. You have the best taste in music. Thank I mean, you, you really do. You know, when we were shooting one scene, I'm not going to tell you which it was. I remember the little JBL speaker. I had it on, on the thing. And I just would play, when, when we were doing the scene, I was playing the only living boy in New York for Alana Yeah. over and over because I just, I woke up and I was like, the this movie is such a New York film. Yeah. And it's just that feeling and that experience. And it's literally, you could watch this movie and say it's her story. Mm -hmm. It's Eden's story. It's her story. It's Dawn's story. It's Hassan's story. Yeah. It's the story of the city. And it's, a, and, and, it, and it is a movie about choice words with Samantha B. Uh, See how I, <laughs> is it over? I'm just kidding. The I, no, I was. It's never. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. I did think that the relationship with Hassan was beautifully rendered too. That's yeah. kind of rare too. Yeah, it, it's so. I think it's so important to see um, black and brown men be um, happy and stable, supportive fathers. Yes. Um, you know, I'm really just so tired of this narrative, uh, you know, the, the buffoonery of like, sorry, I'm gonna call out love and hip hop right now. Just all the stuff, mm -hmm. like under that umbrella, you know what I mean? It's so nice to see just, just normalize some good old fashioned diversity. You know, let's just do it, you know, because if you, like, we're actually all friends, like Alana, Hassan, and I, we're all friends, but like when I watched the movie for the first time, I said, God damn, we look good. Yeah, <laughs> so gorgeous. I was Queen like, this together. is Queens. Yes. Like, that's Queens, yep. baby. Yes. That's the borough. And I was like, I like this. <laughs> this is nice. This combo makes beautiful babies. It do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hassan, I remember Hassan when you guys were sitting on the end of the bed during and, and shit's covering the walls or whatever. You'll see. It's great. It's yeah. not. It's spoiler. Um, but Hassan looked at you and you're in front of this beautiful, the wooden headboard. And he goes, yeah. look at all this melanated beauty. <laughs> Can your, do you have it HD, like high enough to understand what's happening here? <laughs> uh, like it was this, just an incredible thing. Yeah, it was. And you guys' chemistry incredible. is so it's beautiful and sweet. Beautiful. Aww. Sweet. There's yes. a, a real friendship behind this couple that I love and relate to. It feels so modern and true. Yeah. That they're like, come on. You know, you can see the whole... Uh, color wheel of emotions yes. between them. They're yeah. pissed at each other, they're goofing off, they're horny. But that's, <laughs> that's what it, that's, you know, that's what it can be too. You guys can be, you can, you, you can be in love with your best friend. Your partner can be your friend. It doesn't always have to be like everyone loves Raymond. Like, oh, my wife isn't doing the thing again. It's like, you guys are doing it together. Like I loved yes. every time we yeah. high-fived. So I was like, that's real. It's yeah. yep. is when a couple is a team, yeah. like an actual, they're on each other's team in a project, feels fresh. It's like uh, it's like Coach Taylor and Tammy and Coach Taylor. Nice. <laughs> yeah. You can remember these things because they're so rarely seen. Yeah. yeah. And so. And I we need it modeled, too. Yeah. You know? yes. like, unfortunately, our education system hinges on TV and movies. <laughs> <laughs> we need to see it. Yeah. We do. We do. All right. Um, 
Okay, we've talked. Your village is here. You're the village. The I don't understand who here. Tammy and Coach Taylor is, though. Friday Night Lights. Oh, excuse Friday me. Friday Night. Friday Night Lights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call Connie Britton right after this. I'm sorry. I didn't fucking get it. Who okay. is so your your the village that supports you? They are literally sitting in the front row, which is awesome. <laughs> Just awesome. Who do you go to in your who's in your who's in your circle? Who who are the people that you reach out to for help or advice or counsel or just to blow off steam? Oh. I mean, she's in my circle. Oh. <laughs> she's um one of the top 5 <laughs> because no one's going to get it like between right. being uh, you know doing a bunch of like the show you know the acting, the the stand up, the the boundaries with friends, the yep. kid, the being married, trying to be in a loving relationship while you're like also the most important relationship is with yourself, like right. type shit. Like, so we're yeah. hitting a real adult stride, you and I. We and our are. Friends. We met <laughs> as knuckleheads. You know, getting nuts in Look, the comedy working scene. for drink tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Picklebacks and shit. Yeah. Look at us now. Yeah. Tums. I need tums. <laughs> <laughs> With everything. Yep. Yeah. We've been hitting a real adult stride. Yeah. And it's so true. And to find like women who can understand the different roles that you have to play, whether they're the same, ours happen to really overlap, but yeah. to talk about the switching contexts yeah, is right. really, really helpful, I find, with my best women friends. Well, I loved the movie. I recommend that you all go to the premiere tonight at the Paramount. Everyone who's listening to this podcast needs to see this film, which I believe comes out in May. We will all be waiting for it. And may I just put in my bid uh, for you to make another movie in 20 years, and oh. that is Babes 2, Menopause Edition. Yeah. <laughs> you need it. It's needed. Um I want to thank you so much. I want to thank everyone for coming thank to this you. live event. I yes. really yes. you guys. Thanks everybody oh. for not going to Conan. Here with Look us. at that afro thank in the you back. So much, thank you everyone. for coming with that afro. Woo! Look at your <laughs> yes. afro. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Good Thanks night. everybody. Good night everyone. It's stay safe out there.